guys. It, it's a long time uh, between now and, and next year's draft. But, Darren, uh, as a player, would it surprise you if he decides to stay in school? Uh, no, not really. I mean, now that you hear a little bit more about his, his situation, and it's, it'd, be the good, it'd be good to be, you know, the, the starting quarterback for the USC Trojans. Not I mean, there's bad. a lot of perks that come along <laughs> with that. So I, I think, it, you know, it's, you know, I, if he has the financial means, I mean, a lot of times the players come out because of the financial means. They don't have those means to stay in school. You see a lot of players come out because of the fact that, you know, they need to figure out a way to support them, their, themselves and families and all that. I think Sam Donald's a guy that, you know, he probably has those financial needs and he probably doesn't need to come out if he doesn't want to. He, if he wants to explore the rest of school and, and, and graduate a Trojan, and then so be it. But, you know, I don't think he's any, under any pressure to come out right now. Jeff, uh, Dan, even, uh, you, you, you guys talk to a lot of teams, a lot of guys in front offices. What are you hearing about how teams like him? Well, first of all, we can say that, yes, teams unanimously believe that this guy is an NFL quarterback, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's the only one in the 2018 draft. And that's why I think that it's far too premature for him or anyone else to suggest that he will come out. Josh Rosen, for instance, according to my sources with the Jets, is a guy that they covet uh, very much at the top of this draft. Now, of course, it's too early to say whether it's Rosen, um, whether it's any of these guys. I think there's four guys that we could wind up seeing uh, as franchise quarterbacks by 2018 s playing at some point in that season. So far too early at this point. I would say that it is going to be dependent on who's picking number one, and I think that the leverage is in the corner of the players at this yeah, point. Maybe if you're the player, you, it doesn't hurt you to, to put that message out, right? I'm not saying sure. that's where Daniel got his information, but you know, what I'm saying is if it's, it could be to the benefit of the player if there's a team that you don't particularly want to play for. You're now telegraphing. You don't don't go ahead and tank your season for the number one pick because you might not have the ability to, to take me. But I think Jeff's point about um, a lot has to happen yet is a good one, too. I mean, this guy's played one season. A year ago, you would not have forecast Mitchell Trubisky as the number two pick in this year's draft. He hadn't played at all. Right. We don't know what the landscape is going to look like next April. The NFL teams are very, very high on next year's quarterback class, but of course, an entire college football season still has to happen to validate all those opinions about these guys. And if, and if Sam Darnold went out and played poorly or got hurt, all of a sudden he may not look like the number one uh, overall pick or one of the top two or three. But these are big decisions that have major but impact. That's the risk you take. It I mean, as, as, as a quarterback in, in, in college football, I mean, if, 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 if the path is set the, out there to be a first-round pick in the, in the NFL draft and you're taking that chance of staying in school and yeah. risking injury, mm -hmm. I mean, every game is not promised to you. I mean, every time you step out on that field, something could absolutely happen to you. But so it, why take that chance? Sam Bradford went back, got hurt, still went right. number one. Andrew right. Luck went back, didn't get hurt, went number one. I mean, think about the effect these decisions have. Andrew Luck decides in 2011 not to enter the draft and, and go back for his, for his uh, senior year at Stanford. Had he entered that draft, the Panthers would have taken him number one, right? right? The Cam Newton could have been a Buffalo Bill or a Cincinnati Bengal. Uh, you know, the, the following year, the Colts might have brought back Peyton Manning. I mean, it's amazing the way teams can make their plans around these things and how it can affect them. So if you go next year and you're saying there's three or four quarterbacks in this year's draft that everybody loves, now all of a sudden it's only two or three, that can have a major impact at the top from, of the From draft. a player's perspective at this point, too, though, don't you want to get to that second contract? Because you're not making, yes. I mean, you're making good money yes. if you're the number one overall pick. No question about it. But you want to get there faster and get there so that you look at the end of your career and get as many contracts as you can. That's the key. The I mean, try to get them young. L I mean. Let's talk about the teams, though, that are going to need quarterbacks next year, right? It's fair to say the Browns, the Jets, the 49ers. So let's say Donald decides to stay in school. Which team does this hurt the most for next season without having him as their top choice as a quarterback? Well, let's consider the fact that the Browns will be looking at Deshaun Kaiser this season. Yeah. Let's think about the fact that if the Redskins don't lock up Kirk Cousins, Kyle Shanahan will be having his eye on mm -hmm. him. Now, the Jets, of course, I think, uh, probably get hurt the worst by any team or any quarterback deciding to stay because ultimately it makes the pool smaller, and by the time it gets to them, whether one, two, or three, uh, they want to have as many options uh, as available. And by the way, I don't mean to assume that the Jets will be in the bottom no, three. No, right. And, yeah, and, you and, are. <laughs> yeah, go I'm ahead. Darren, it, there's going to be teams on that, that aren't on that list that show up. I mean, maybe if the Rams have a terrible year and they decide oh, yeah. Jared Goff's not their guy. So, but, I mean, you look at San Francisco with all the cap space they're forecast to have next year, and you mentioned Kirk Cousins. If he gets to free agency, it will be the apple of Kyle Shanahan's eye. 
Yeah, the Jets are in a position where they may, they may be more focused on the top of the draft as their quarterback solution than some of the teams that have those gobs and gobs of cap space like San Francisco and Cleveland. Darren, you bring up a good point about, about the risk of staying in school, but is there actually a benefit for him if he were to go back to, to USC? Well, I, you know, get his education. I mean, get it, you know, that's, get his diploma outside of that. I mean, I, a lot of guys, I mean, listen, there's a lot of players I played with coming out of college. They love the college experience, and they wanted to go through that and experience it all for all four years. But then there's the other side. When you're an athlete, you want to maximize your dollars, yeah. and, and you want to get in as soon as, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of guys want to get out as soon as they can because they want to get in when they're 20, 21 years old so they can get two, three, maybe four contracts exactly. because this game is not promised. You get into your 30s, and it's pretty much over for you, so yeah. you have a small window of time to do that. Colleges aren't closing anytime soon. Go get your degree after you finish your career. <laughs> I mean, maybe uh, that's not the popular theory, but yeah, I mean, yeah. you also want to be in college when you're young. I mean, you say it's over in your 30s. That's not really true of quarterbacks, though. I mean, that, that's the one position that can continue that's to That's the one like position, that. but most of the right. players aren't just quarterbacks that are coming yeah. out. I mean, you're talking about a, a ton of guys coming out that are position players. Yeah, which I, 